So at launch, the DJI Neo had one big problem when it came to flying. It was pitifully slow. It was so slow that I could actually out sprint it while running, let alone cycling. And for a drone that has a pretty big part of its reputation on tracking you while you're doing things like running and cycling and whatever else it may be, that was a bit of a problem. Sure, from a following standpoint, it was great at keeping locked onto you, but not holding on for the ride, something that their competitors like Hover could easily do. That's because previously the Neo was limited to about 20 kilometers an hour or 13 miles an hour. That is, again, incredibly slow. Now, with a firmware update released just yesterday, things supposedly changed. DJI says they've increased the tracking speed. Did DJI list what the tracking speed was in release notes? No, of, of course not, that would have been useful. Instead, we're gonna come out here and test it. This is essentially a dead end road, which makes it really quick and easy to repeatedly test this and figure out exactly how fast it's gonna go before we go into the woods for realsies. But before we update it, let's go ahead and set a baseline and a couple core scenarios. Don't worry, this will take just a couple seconds. The first being how fast can it fly just regular mode flying around, not tracking anything. Just for context on how slow this is going with full speed ahead, I am walking basically next to it right now. There we go. It's going walking speed. It doesn't show you on the phone how fast it's going, but it's pathetically slow. Next, in simple follow mode, using the phone as my following thing. I will press start. There we go. It's following me as an object right there. So we are going 15 kilometers an hour. Let's get up to 20. And we're starting to slowly go away from it, 25. And while it's visually tracking me, I'm now going away from it. And if I go up to 30 here, it's already, we've lost it. It's way back there. So roughly like 22 was kind of the limit of there in again, totally open space with nothing in front of us. Now here we have the RC2 to show you what it looks like on that from a speed standpoint. And once again, we're topping out at 20.5 kilometers an hour. If we switch over to sport mode, here we go. It goes into the trees. There we go, a little bit straighter. 25, 26, 27 kilometers an hour is sort of the limit there. And then just to demonstrate sport mode tracking, pre-firmware update, here we go. And then this time I have the controller right here. We're gonna get going, speed back up again. We're at 20 kilometers an hour. Let's get up to 26 to show if it tracks or not. And you can see I'm already moving away now from it. Uh, and at this point it will eventually lose me if I maintain my speed. So let's get the firmware update and see how things go. So as you can see listed on there, optimized positioning performance and increased flight speed during tracking. Of course, they didn't list what it was. Thus, if you are finding this video interesting and useful, just give it a like right now or watch it all the way to the end. That's the only thing YouTube cares about these days and I'd much appreciate it. Okay, so repeating the same set of tests again. Here's just normal flying. Let me go up slightly. And can it go faster than I'm walking when it comes to just manual control? Here we go, forward. Not much, no, I'm... I'm walking basically as fast as it's going in cycling shoes, no less. So not so much for manual control with a phone, but that's all right. I want to see if it can go faster when it's following me. So let's bring it back here and go down the hill following me. And I'll, get, I'll get, let it get turned around. Okay, now we're at 20, 22, 25, 26, 30. Just holding on, starting to slowly separate, 32. 33, 34, yeah, I think it's doing it. Good job, little buddy. So, looks like about 34 starts to falter a bit. Let's go back to the top and go down full speed, like 50 kilometers an hour and see what happens. See where that break point is. I'm gonna change it to be a little bit higher though. Okay, here we go. Full-ish send on higher this time. Down we go. I'm at 35 right now. Starting to kind of struggle a little bit behind me there, but it is following me at 40. Still holding on, but clearly the gap is increasing. Okay, let's go back up and do this at a sustained 35 and see if that's our like, our actual break point. Rumors on the internet say 35. I think it's probably closer to 30. So I'll reset at the top of the hill. Let's get to it pretty quickly. Okay, we're now basically at 35 right there. Gonna keep us at 35. 
Yeah, I'd say it's it's sustaining this in, I think it's limited is probably like 33. So before we go into the woods, let's go ahead and do one check with the RC2 to see if it speeds any different or better there, uh, in sport mode in particular, and then uh, we'll go have some fun. So here we go in normal mode, going down the street right now. Looks like we're gonna top out about 20, so it's kind of limited just like before right there. And then we'll kick it into sport mode here. And 25, 28, and we go above the uh, 28, yeah. So it's it's not quite as fast actually as in uh, tracking mode it seems like. We got them perfectly level right now, uh, going towards me. I'm holding full sticks forward. There's no wind at all right now. Uh, and then we're about at 28 or so kilometers an hour. So ironically, it seems like they didn't actually increase the sport mode settings for this with the controller, but clearly increased the follow settings to be somewhere in the 32 to 35 kilometer an hour range. That is almost as bizarre as the original decision to have it be so slow. Kidokis, down we go. Let it sort itself out, there we go. I'm at 20. Well, I guess it shows you on the screen what it is, so I don't need to call it out. I'm at 31, 33, it's going 33, so it seems like on the controller it's stopping around 31. I'm doing 38 right now pulling away. So once again, confirming that my 32-ish kilometer an hour range is what I think it's limited at. Okay, with that all set, let's uh, let's go have some fun. Okay, here we are in the trees and it's simple. We're gonna go until it dies. It could be right there on that tree or it could be down the road somewhere, down the trail somewhere, or we'll go to I die. Until someone dies, then we then we stop. I brought it down to flat as opposed to being high, so it doesn't, doesn't hit the trees probably. See if it can do this. And now that I made the churn, should be able to go a little bit faster through here. And one of the cool things that the Neo does is it follows your track basically on the ground as opposed to short circuiting on turns and stuff like that, which usually means it lasts longer than its competitors. I just, well, that's, that's the end of that. Hey there, buddy. What you doing in the bush? Not that time of day. So we're gonna go ahead and keep on going because this is the best part of the trail. So here we go, here we go. Oh, I heard some spicy back there. Which way am I gonna go? Oh, nay. Of course, it doesn't have any obstacle avoidance sensors. So it just YOLOs everything, unlike the hover drones, which by the way, you're probably wondering about that. Mine's still stuck in customs. You can see that on the side there. Been about five, six weeks now, still stuck in customs. Supposedly they've sent a new one out, but uh, we'll see about that. Now I'm going a bit slower this time around and it's obviously following me, but I would never ride this trail this slow. Uh, unless I wanted a drone to follow me, but uh, it's doing this trick. Yep, phone down. Oh no, just ran it over. Good news, iPhone's still alive. Bad news, my uh, my case, it's reached its death. That's it. My case split in half. <laughs> it's gone. It's had a long life, so you know. We'll just hold it together and uh, go from there. As I was saying, let's go little buddy. Little buddy, little buddy. So setting aside any quality stuff, yeah, I can now use this thing. Before it was kind of useless. I still wish it folded because it doesn't fit super awesome in my back jersey pocket. It's not bad, but it's not awesome. Same goes for like running shorts versus the hover just folds and easily fits in any running shorts. But, but for $199, I'm pretty happy with this in terms of at least following speed and of course the tracking capabilities. But obviously once I get the hover pro and max out of customs, then we'll do a full bake off the way you'd expect a bake off to be. With that, thanks for watching. Have a good one.